Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Bearded Green Beret, coming here from Ohio, wearing my Hunt Primitive t-shirt, courtesy of my buddy Ryan Gill over at Hunt Primitive. Check him out, he's doing some incredible things with atlatls, real hunting, atlatls, bows, etc. But anyway, just a shout out to him because I think his t-shirt's cool and I love what he's doing. Uh, but anyway, this video is going to be a follow-up to the Easy Tarp Shelters video where I go over the five or sorry, the three basic tarp shelters in the five minute shelter system. And if you remember, that includes the same rapid ridge line, three different shelter configurations. Actually, there's four. Actually, this is number five. But anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna get into the freestanding wedge shelter. This is an additional shelter that you can add to that system to give you more options. And this one is especially useful in an area where you don't have trees that facilitate a ridge line. I'm gonna show you how to use that same rapid ridge line to set up this shelter so even if you've seen this before you might not have seen it this way so stick around same ridge line setup rapid ridge line setup with my end of the line bowling hanked 25 feet paracord with my bank line that i'm not going to use this time but anyway same ridge line setup i've got two different poles here these poles are roughly two to three inches in diameter doesn't have to be anything crazy you could also use trekking poles if you happen to have those uh, those would work well for this configuration as well so typically what you would do and what you've probably seen here is a traditional shear lash all right what i'm going to do is kind of a modification to that shear lash that incorporates it directly into the shelter system using that same ridge line pull my hank out i'll go ahead and get those out of the way because I don't need them. And rather than doing a timber hitch or a clove hitch, I'm gonna do just a simple running bowling. And I want these to start towards the bottom of the pole. I'm gonna get these out of the way. This would be the top of my poles. Sorry, I'm doing this where I can't actually see what's going on. So this would be the top of my poles. So I'm gonna start from bottom, work my way up to the top, four to six wraps. I'm going to do a simple running bowling where I take it into the line bowling, put the end through, and pull that through. So this is going to replace, all right, there's a splice there. This is going to replace my timber hitch. Pull some tension on that. Now I'm going to do four to six wraps back up towards the top. That's four, not counting the first one. Keeping those stacked up. There's five. And that is six. Now, I've got my six wraps, not counting the first one. Got my six wraps. I want to change direction. So I want to come up from bottom to top. Pull that through. Get around that splice. I'll just spread that open. Give me a little more room. This is splice from when I cut it the other day to show a different knot video. Now, now I'm gonna start my frapping turns. And I'm only gonna do about two or three. One, get past that inconvenient splice. And two, and I want it to finish at the bottom. And that will become apparent shortly. So there's my six wraps two fraps and I want it to finish here at the bottom like so so there is my modification on the shear lash and now just take my tarp and it could be any tarp you want I just happen to be using this grabber emergency space blanket I'm going to be doing a wedge shelter, which is basically a diamond or a plow point. So the pivot for that is this back corner here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and stake out this back corner. And put that in nice and tight because I'm actually going to be pulling against that. Then I'm going to move to the front. You can see I've got that going back towards the back, and I haven't staked out the sides, just the back part that I'm actually going to run a pivot against. And then what I'm going to do is stand up my poles and get this where you can see it. Stand up my poles and spread that out because that is a shear lash to about the height that I want it to be. And notice that this is in the front. Out here in the front. I'll bring the opposite corner. You got the corner that's staked down. I'll bring the opposite corner up, pass a bite through that grommet, then take a toggle or another stake slide it in there to capture that and then pull that tight and I can adjust the height of this however I want the main thing is I want this line sorry I want this line running down the ridge to be nice and tight so I can bring this straight down to the front and stake it off that'd be a rock right there And that stake needs to be fairly tight as well. So what I'll do here most likely, just to keep it simple and keep it with the same knots, is just tie my trucker's hitch here. Overhand slip. Go through. Go through a second time. Just like we do any other ridge line. Pull that tight. And then I'll tie it off with a half hitch on a bite or a half hitch quick release. And there's other videos that show this complete trucker's hitch in more detail. Right there, same thing we always do. And now with this ridge tight, all I have to do is stake out the side. And I've got myself a nice little diamond plow point shelter with no with no actual ridge line. So this is a freestanding wedge <coughs> using the rapid ridge line. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, we appreciate your likes, your views. You're a mosquito repellent. We appreciate your likes, your views, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Click that notification bell. Make sure you get all the videos. Right now, we're still releasing every Tuesday and every Friday, normally around 2 p.m. ish, maybe a different time zone if I'm running late, just saying. But also, make sure you're on my email list. Thanks again. Hope to see you in the woods.